in 2D because actually the 3D was crazy. It didn't, didn't help you see this at all. And we'll do the hairline design in 3D and there's gonna be a lot more 3D stuff next, uh, tomorrow. So this is a really, 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 really important talk because this is at once how to design a head that looks natural but also it's really what makes me have a lot of fun because it's artistic. It helps you design a shape and so you have to understand how hair grows differently on the scalp in different parts. And that's so fundamental because you cannot make the same angles and directions across the scalp. So we start back with understanding the Norwood pattern because if, if this sounds like some textbook thing that you don't need to look at and you gloss over, you're failing to understand that Norwood patterns are basically the way that natural recession occurs. And if you design a pattern that's ex outside the framework of the Norwood pattern, you're going to create results that look weird and unnatural. So please, if you, if just look at people's scalps and you'll see how various patterns of loss are, are present. So you've got to divide the scalp into a lot of little areas here. And the, I'm going to show you a box, scalp, box of the head that's a lot easier to understand than this diagram. So I'm going to go to have you understand that hairs on each part of the head grow differently. It's going to be much easier with Stephen's head to show you this than some of this little drawings, but I just want to have you conceptualize that the scalp works differently. If you see, I don't know, this is the laser? Yeah. Over, the laser, there it is. This, these angles go straight forward and they slope down this way. How do they slope down? they start to cascade downwards like this. And I'm going to show you that more specifically. And the vertex or the crown, which are synonymous terms for my, in my book, is that these go in a, a whirl or a swirl pattern. So we're going to walk you through subtlety. That's the, the gross general ideas, and we'll break it down. Some of the recipient sites that you're designing to mimic this, this is to show you a hairline in macroscopic detail. But you see how all the angles go straight? A mistake that a lot of people do when they start is they start making their angles like this, radial to the scalp, and then the, the hairs don't comb well, there's no good density, and it's not a good way to do things. So we'll see on the scalp that this is actually a natural pattern. Um, this is a, to show you the transitions going over to the temple hair, it goes downwards, and the, and the one thing you need to know on the, on the head, there are no abrupt transitions. I repeat, there are no abrupt transitions. What that means is, if I'm making a site going this direction, I'm not gonna make one over here. If I have to make one over here, it's gonna slowly go to this way. So you want a gentle transitions, and it's gonna be much easier to show in Stephen's head on the, on the large screen what I'm talking about. But at least, we, I just wanna walk you through this in terms of design. This is just to show you some site, does, recipient sites of a whirl and going up. Obviously, I haven't finished all the sites here, but this is just showing the pattern of design. And you see how these whirl up like this? There's a gentle transition of each of these patterns, so there's no abrupt transitions of the angles. A female hairline is beyond the scope right now of discussion, but we'll have this in the, in the, uh, in the lab. And you can see they actually create this cowlick and there's this gentle curve, almost going backwards, very different from what a male hairline is. So, when I was trying to think about how to educate people about each part of the scalp, it's very confusing, right? Where's the mid-scalp? Where's the hairline? Where's the vertex? Where's the lateral hump? Where's the lateral crease? All these terms are very, very difficult. And I thought about it. The easiest way to communicate this to a prospective patient, or actually even better, to a colleague of who wants to do this, is a box because there are vertical planes and there are horizontal planes. Now obviously there's a general transition on a real head because it's round. I don't think there's any square heads in here. But if you just take the, the rounded head and make it square, put everything that's on the horizontal plane on the horizontal plane, everything on the vertical plane on the vertical plane, and take that transition of going from horizontal to vertical, then you understand the landmarks that are important. So I think this is a much easier slide to understand. So let's start with the one on the right. If you see this is the hairline, the hairline is by definition essentially a transition from the, the horizontal plane of the mid-scalp down to the forehead. And that transitional phase is, is at a 45 degree angle, and you hear this from Bassam coming up on the hairline design, that transitional phase is where the hairline is. So it's, the hairline is really a transition, if you think about it, from vertical to horizontal plane of the scalp. Then you go to the back side of this. This is the back side view. You see posterior here. The crown is on the vertical scalp. It's on the posterior vertical scalp. And it's a different pattern, as you saw. And as it goes into the mid-scalp, that transition is known as the vertex transition zone, or vertex transition point, or posterior hairline. 
And so when you st figure out where you're going to stop your design, if you're not going to do the crown at the same time, which is usually a good idea not to try to stretch your design work all that far because you don't have enough graphs to adequately cover that, then you need to have a stopping point. And the stopping point is at the vertex transition zone, and there's a little bit different pattern there than the frontal hairline, which I'm going to show you on Stephen's scalp. Much easier to see that. Then the lateral hump is just basically everything lateral to your canthus here, going lateral to your lateral canthus, and that going down this way has a different pattern. And we're, I'm going to show you that pattern, and the transition from mid-scalp over there is known as a lateral crease. So these are just landmarks that are really easy to communicate with one another in the lab, and in, in uh, meetings, uh, in writings, and also so that you understand how to design things in such a way that it conforms to a natural shape on a scalp. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. And this is something that I'm not, the two things, you don't have to worry about tilt or anything, but I think the two directions, and you're going to, you're going to get this enforced in the lab are going to be angle and direction. So we're going to talk a little bit about angle and direction here. Angle refers to the anterior posterior position of the site, so going this way, all right? And direction means this, okay? Tilt means this, but don't worry about tilt. It's more a sophisticated thing that it doesn't really re uh, uh, relate or it's not important for 99% of the time. But just understand angle, anterior posterior, Okay, maybe the mnemonic is angle and anterior, okay? And direction is going to be laterality going this way. So we'll talk about that, again, more specifically there. So I'm going to leave this one up so you have a schematic of the whole head while we do a little um, 2D. Jeff or Dave, can we switch over? Jeff, great. And still stay in focus. Try to get as close as you can to show this. Okay, so what you're seeing here, do you see how these all go uh, forward? Let me see. Let's, let's aim it down, aim it down like this. I hope you can see that. They really go forward, okay? Yeah, more lights in the room, please. Can you give them a little more lights? Is this the brightest? Here. Okay, great. So you see all these going forward. So the key here is they don't splay like this, all right? If you splay like this, you're going to have a very uncombable result. Plus, you're not going to get density because all the graphs are angled all over the place. And your placer is going to have a hard time placing it. So these all go forward into the anterior hairline. So that's probably... My light is... The light is gone. Can we turn more lights on? Yeah, bright as you can. And I think the screen is still going to be functional. I mean, it's shining down. Ah, much better. Oh, yes. Okay, lean back a little bit so we can get actually. Great. Okay, so he's combing it a little bit over this way, but the main thing is if this were a completely bald scalp, you would follow straight forward. Now, if he's got hair angles that are slightly off to one side, you need to follow that. Otherwise, you're going to tear through all his hair as you're making those recipient sites. The key thing that I want to show you is that these directions go forward. If you forget everything I'm going to tell you, please remember that as a fundamental when you're designing the mid-scalp going into the anterior hairline. Um, if you look over to the side, I'll wait till we get in focus here. There we go. Okay. And down a little bit, please. Right there. Beautiful. And then centered. Thank you. So if you take a look, you see how these angles start to aim downwards, okay? And they start to cascade down. So there's no abrupt transition. You can't see an abrupt transition. All the transitions go slowly. So if Steven's around here, hopefully he's around here, uh, look at his scout, maybe a break if he's not going to run away, and really understand this. And, and it's, it's so good to see it here, but if you want to see it in live, you get a little more of the three-dimensionality. But the other thing is you start to go down. This, uh, the way I look at it is like a waterfall. Each successive row going from, this is the lateral crease, going down into the lateral hump or, or, or the temporal region, and you can start seeing that each row progressively goes further down. Can you see that? Where these are almost vertically going down and these are vertical going down. So look at my, the way that I'm drawing my fingers like this. It, it used almost, this is horizontal and almost going in. These are horizontal going slightly down. These are horizontal and then going down. These are less horizontal, maybe about you know, 30, 40 degrees, 45 degrees, and then goes down almost 90 degrees to 90 degrees. So really take a look. Let me turn this sideways here. I really want you to see that and try to memorize. I'm sorry, you okay? No, yeah. All right, patient may die here, but it was worth in the cause of education, right? So you can truly see that. And that's one thing I want you to, in your head, take some photographs in your head of what I'm talking about because the more you see it, the better you're going to get at this. And if you don't understand this, you don't even go to the lab and start designing because you need to understand how hair is, is flowing on a scalp. And this is so easy because you got a long head, lo sorry, long hair on a head, you're not going to be able to see this. Okay, let's take a look. Um, I'm going to turn, turn the scalp head all the way around and do the vertex. So we're going to turn all the way around. 
And let's lean a little bit down so the light is shining more onto the scalp. And I mean, a good, okay. So let's take a look back here at the vertex. Again, vertical plane, okay? And this is the transition point across here, the vertex transition zone between horizontal and vertical. If this doesn't look vertical because his head is being tilted, but this is the juncture or posterior hairline. So before we get to understand that transitional zone, let's talk about the crown. So he's got a crown where the, and I'm gonna talk really specific and very advanced uh, topic on the crown coming up, I think on Saturday. But I w really want you to see how this world pattern starts and whirls across like this, okay? You see that? Where it really goes in a perfect whirl. And, and sometimes you get two whirl points, sometimes it starts over here, sometimes it's clockwise, this, this one's clockwise, sometimes it's counterclockwise. So if they don't have one, then you, you can design one. I won't go into the, the ways to design it. But if, you, if they've got one, you gotta match what he's had, otherwise you can have competing uh, shapes. But you can see this goes in a spiral pattern, okay? And I'm not gonna really talk about too much of the directionality here, I just wanna talk to you about the um, way that this, this goes in, in terms of this gentleman's scalp and how it goes in general. The other thing that's really important, you saw that in my design work for the recipient sites, is as the, the vertex or crown transitions to neighboring zones, it does so in a different way. I mean, it does so in a, slow, in a transitional phase. So if you see now the vertex transition zone, it angles a little out and then it starts to aim in. So take a look here. If you look, I don't know if I mean, yeah, good. You see how this, at the vertex transition zone, which is right here, it's not all straight forward. The middle section is straight forward. And this side here follows what? The lateral hump. Do you see how that just naturally sweeps and follows here, right? Do you see that? And so you have to see this transition going up. So when you're designing the vertex transition zone, the temptation is to make all the angles perfectly straight. The majority are going straight forward, the mid-scalp. But at the lateral aspect, just like when the, you saw the temple going down like this, you're seeing these transition and go out and over. And the same thing on this side here, you see this go this way, but because this is a, a, a world that goes clockwise, it goes like this and splits, okay? Can you see that here? Let's take, let's take a look. Let's turn you this way a little bit here, Stephen. Thank you very much. So let's take a look at this part zone, uh, or the, do you see how this, goes like this down, okay? And then this one goes up, and this one goes down. They're splaying like this. Again, no abrupt transition points. So that's really, really important that you see this, okay? And then going back here to the bottom portion, when you go to the donor hair, almost all the donor hair goes straight down, right? So how does this go like this, and all of a sudden go like this? It's not. If you look, lean forward a little bit, it goes like this. You see this? Can you see that? My fingers are the directionality that I'm trying to show you here, okay? So the, the, the take home lesson here in summary is that hair grows differently in every part of the scalp, number one. Number two, think of it like a box. It'll help you understand this in terms of vertical and horizontal planes. Number three, there are no abrupt transitions, okay? And number four is look at a natural scalp so you can understand that. And number five is Really, if I, as I said, the take home lesson, if the crown is a complicated area, obviously. I'm not gonna expect you to do crown the first year out, and you shouldn't. You should build into the doing the crown. But if you're doing hairline work, the, turn all the way around here, Stephen. The, if you're doing hairline work, the number one mistake I'll see in the lab, if you're a right-handed person, is that, and I've made it, is when I'm making my sights, when I go over this side, I'm gonna do too much torquing in my hand going this direction where you've got to mentally keep it straight because you're working on a curved plane. What you're seeing here is a compressed 2D image, but you're gonna be working on a three-dimensional space. And so when you're working on it and you're right-handed, your hand is gonna have a different angulation. It's a natural temptation when you go to the left side to have a different angle. So when I started working with Amina, Amina had more experience than I did with hair, and, and she beat me silly, I think it's a Serbian background, I'm sorry. And help, I did sites, recipient sites, every night at home on a sandal and on a honeydew, which you'll be doing, okay? I'll torture you like Amina tortured me. And it was good torture because I needed it is to do it over and over. I'm gonna watch you, I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna change it. I've seen even people in this meeting five years into practice making sites that don't make sense because no one sat with them and taught them to, to do this the right way. So don't be arrogant about how long you've been in practice and how long you've been doing or, how, or what you think you know. Work with it in a humble way. Let me see those sites. I have things to learn. I constantly learn from my colleagues. So watch that and try to make these angles straight except for maybe the lateral centimeter as it starts to curve downwards. 
Any questions about that? Does that make sense? Is this helpful? Yeah, I'd be happy to take any questions from the audience if something didn't make sense. Okay, good. Thanks, Steve.